I recently beat my first ever Final Fantasy game here recently, which is Final Fantasy VI. And before moving on with the series, I wanted to give a quick little beginner's tip guide because I, there is some information while playing this game that I would have liked to known or was lucky enough to have known since I was streaming on Twitch that I allowed some backseating tips and guides from other helpful Twitchers and it just made the gameplay a lot more pleasurable to play through. Um, so I'm going to cover a few of what I find are the most helpful tips for beginners if you're brand new to Final Fantasy VI. My first recommendation is to apply a mod to this game. I went ahead and installed the A World Reborn mod, which updated a lot of the graphics. I think it included some music, um, but I'll leave a link in the description where you could download that too and read up all about the differences and how they've improved the game. Another recommendation I have while playing this game is to go into the configuration menu and change the... Um, the active time battle system from active to wait. That'll allow you more time to search through all your menus when you're in battle to like decide what magic you might want to use when you do get magic. It just gives you extra time while battling, which is very helpful when you're learning and getting used to the game. And my last recommendation before I go into the actual tips is to take notes in this game. I find it very helpful to write down especially all of Sabin's commands, and I might be mispronouncing his name, and I probably will mispronounce names in this video, so bear with me. Um, but he has a long list of blitz commands, which are very, very good, especially early game, but even late game. Like His blitzes are good, and but they... Uh, depend on so many different action commands which I will go over in a minute because they are confusing if you don't understand how he works exactly um, which he can be a very frustrating character for that reason but he's still one of my favorites uh, but anyway take notes another good thing to take notes on are magic uh, write down what they do like arise Arisen or <laughs> Osmos like there's so many new Magic words. I'm not familiar with because I've never been involved in this game that much So it was helpful to write down some of the magic that are useful during battle and what it does Just so you don't get confused on what it does and how you might use it to your advantage My first tip of this game is to save and save frequently and to save right here in the open map there are levels you will encounter that have little diamond or crossed, cross-shaped, uh, white glowing things where you can save on as well. Um, don't rely on the quick save. I made that mistake. I had to play hours of gameplay over just because I didn't realize on the open world map is where you should save before going into these levels or after completing levels because it's such a frustration to go back and play through parts especially difficult parts that you barely skimped by on the first time uh, so tip one save constantly and save here on, on the open map that's the best tip of this video probably <laughs> all right tip number two you will inevitably get magic in this game but how to apply that or to give your characters those abilities is you need to apply the esper magicite in their item slot uh, i made this mistake early on i wasn't sure what to do with the magicite it wasn't very uh it didn't really explain itself that much from what i remember um, it wasn't until a twitch streamer was like oh, did you apply the magicite because that's how you learn the magical abilities but also above that, it gives you stat boosts as well for your strength, magic, stamina, etc. So be sure to apply your Esper Magicite when you get it. Tip number three has to deal with Sabin's Blitz commands. They were very confusing to me at first, so I'm going to demonstrate for you how to execute them properly. And you won't always get it. I'm going to demonstrate on an Xbox controller, even though I was using a PS4, but it's not going to matter. The same principles apply. You'll go to the blitz command, 
and to activate and to start blitz you'll hit the bottom on this controller it's right there the a button that starts the command now you need to put in a sequence on this uh toggle stick here so the simplest one that i'll demonstrate is rage left right left execute now where it gets tricky is his more advanced blitzes have diagonal so you got to kind of go diagonal up diagonal down sometimes that's where you're going to flub up a lot and feel free to switch back between the stick and the actual pad here i've had i personally had better luck with the stick but you can try the the pad this thing too i don't know i had difficulty with it so rage was awesome it was useful the shorter blitzes are definitely easier um, but you're definitely going to want to get razor gale because it attacks multiple enemies. Practice with his blitz commands. That's tip number three. All right, tip number four. I'm gonna start getting into some of the character's strengths and how I use them and some of the equipment that you wanna be on the search for to make the best character you can make. The next tip I wanna talk about is some of the best equipment and relics to just be on the lookout for within the game. I'm not gonna tell you in this video where to find them or how to obtain them, uh, but I'll tell you some of what their abilities do, why you might want them, and reason why just to write them down at least so you know what to be on the lookout for while playing this game. One of the best armor pieces for Terra and even Celeste can wear this is the Minerva Bustier. And it is a chest piece armor or torso armor or whatever it's called on this game. <laughs> and it nullifies fire, ice, lightning, wind, and resists earth, water, poison, and holy, but it also increases your magic points by 25%, which is beautiful. It gives you plus one strength and st stamina, plus two speed, definitely useful in this game, and plus four magic. Be on the lookout for the Minerva Bustier. The second best relic to be on the lookout for for a magic character is called the Soul of Thamasia. I don't know. It's <laughs> I call it Thamasia in the game, but it's spelled different. I don't know. And what that will do, it allows your magic character to dual cast. That's two ultimas. That's two 9999 attacks in a row. So that relic on your strongest magic wielder is the one of the best relics you can have in Final Fantasy VI. The best shield in the game, by far, the one you need to find is, well, all right, here's the actual tip and trick. It's called the Cursed Shield. You'll get it in the World of Ruin, I believe in Narshi, the same town you'll find the Ragnarok in, so let that be a tip for you. It's in the house on the upper left part of town, and this guy is in the basement, he's sick, and he's gonna give you a cursed shield, and that's, you know, probably what made him sick in the first place. And it, it gives your character so many bad stats, it's hard to actually use this cursed shield in a real battle that's challenging. So the recommendation and tip for the cursed shield is to go to, I believe it's called Solitary Island. It's where Celeste wakes up with Sid taking care of her. And there's a spot on the open world map above there that you can battle peepers with the shield. Because the, the trick of this is you have to win 256 battles for this cursed shield to remove its curse and turn into the Paladine Shield, which is the best shield in the game. What that shield will do is it absorbs fire, ice, lightning, holy, and nullifies poison, wind, earth, water. But the caveat, the main accoutrement of this shield is it teaches you Ultima, which is the best move of the game. It's not the only way to learn Ultima in this game. It's the easiest to teach all your characters, however. Otherwise, you have to give up Rock's Ragnarok to teach everyone Ultima, and then without that, it's hard, or may, I don't know, I don't even know if you can get the Lightbringer without getting Ragnarok. So if you want to make the cake and eat it too, 
choose to gift the actual weapon of Ragnarok when you come to that part, and then uh, turn the curse shield into the Paladine shield. It's going to take some grinding, but now you know where to grind at, the fastest way to do it. And then you can teach everyone Ultima and kick Kefka's ass later in the game. One last thing to mention when grinding f to lift the curse, stay away from the desert on that island. There are black dragons, they do cast death, and you will die instantly, and that's that. Another shield I want to mention that's a good shield to have is called the force shield, and it resists fire, ice, lightning, wind, earth, water, and it actually just grants shell on the user, so basically avoids magic attacks. That's pretty nice. Another good shield to have for another character is called the Aegis. A-E-G-I-S, the Aegis Shield. And it randomly evades magic attacks. So, it's not a terrible shield to have either. Okay, the last tip I have for you in this video is the best move of the game. The one move that rules them all. It's better than Ultima. And you'll see why. That move is called Quick. Quick gives you two turns. So when you stack Quick with the Genji Gloves for Locke or other characters that have a double tack ability, plus the Master Scroll, damage galore. That's not just it though. You put Quick, you teach Quick to a magic user. That's up to four ultimas if you put the Soul of Thamasia on it. Dual casting magic with, ah. So, quick. Also, the way I use it is you can then get off a, a re-raise if someone is dead or going to die. That way you have a backup if your party gets wiped. That way someone will be restored to help hopefully heal you all. You can do an Arise and an Ultima. There's just so many extras, attacks and heals and defense things you get off before your enemy with Quick. It doesn't matter how fast your character is. Um, so potentially if you're a CN user for physical attack ability, Quick with him would be super good for slow characters. Um, anyway, Quick. That is my best recommendation. Find out how to obtain quick. That is the best move in the game, whether you're using it with Ultima, whether you're using it with physical attacks. It is just such a cherry on top when destroying your enemy. So that is my final tip of Final Fantasy VI. I hope you enjoy this game as much as I did. I'm so much looking forward to playing Final Fantasy VII now. That seems to be everyone's favorite game, but after playing Final Fantasy VI, we'll see. I don't know. I really love this game. The characters were amazing. I, I really hope for a remake one day just because I want to know more about Sabin's backstory. I want to know so much more about even Shadow's backstory, and I hate him. <laughs> um, there's just so many good characters that you, they leave you wanting a little bit more of most of them. That's my beginner's tips, tricks, whatever video for Final Fantasy VI. If you need more help, be sure to watch my playthrough guide, Let's Play tutorial I have on my channel at Fun Guy Games. Watch me live at uh, Fun Guy Games on Twitch. I will be streaming Final Fantasy VII next. Otherwise, when that's complete, if this video is old by then, check the playlist below for that content. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope these tips were helpful. I'll catch you in the next game. Stay fun, everyone.